This video is going to be phase two of building Pear's, our billion dollar app. Phase one was July of 2022 up through mid March or no, mid April of 2023. Phase two, I went back through my journal and I kind of got the dates all sorted out beforehand. So we're talking about April of 2023 through the end of September of 2023. And phase two is characterized by me moving away from, we should code this ourselves, my business partner and I trying to do it, you know, in a variety of ways, to let's pay someone else to do this, to code the app and then to get it on the app store for us. We used Instamobile. I wish I could share my screen right now. Um, I'm recording with my phone. I would show you, I'll, let me just throw up a screenshot of Instamobile's website. They are a development company. They have a bunch of clones or templates that they use where you can purchase a package and it will allow you either um, to license the, the code that they have or if you pay up to the $5,000, they'll do some custom code for you. You get a white label license so you could change any of it and they'll publish it on the app stores for you. So we bought their Tinder clone package. It was coded in React Native. I was so stoked. I was so ready to finally have a deadline where I knew in like two months or so I'm going to have an app on the app store and I don't have to do anything. I can kind of sit back and do my the thing that I do best, which is apparently sitting back and letting everybody else work. Um, and so all of May was just waiting for the code to be written. All of June was testing the app. So they had given us a prototype that we would download and we would test on our devices. My, my partner and I would look at some of the stuff. We'd find a bug, we'd send it back and they'd fix it. They did fix all of the bugs that we found. So if it was a true bug, like this feature that they had in there was supposed to work, but it wasn't working, they would fix that. But there was a list of things that they weren't gonna fix unless we paid them an extra $3,000. And those were just features. Those were um, changing the look and the feel of the app, changing some of the words and some of the copy in the app. All of that stuff was gonna cost us more money. We said no to that. So we went ahead and beginning of July, I think is when we started to publish to the Google store and to the Apple app store. And by early July, maybe mid July, we had an app on both stores. Unfortunately, the app still wasn't what we wanted. We weren't gonna pay the $3,000. And so the next, starting in mid July, what my partner and I decided to do was, hey, we have a white label on the code for this and let's just get the code on our computers and let's change it ourselves into what we want. So we got the code and we spent the next, uh, let's, let's, let's say mid-July, <clears throat> let's say mid-July to August to September. So that's, wait, no, July to August, then August to September. So two months where we tried to get the code running on my partner's computer and I probably paid for another um, three sessions with the developer. He had given us just a rate and said, hey, if you need anything, um, I also have an hourly rate and you can contact me. So we ended up paying for three sessions to try and get the code, just, just to get the code running on my partner's computer so that he could make the changes that we wanted. <sighs> Big mistake. Um, for whatever reason, the code was just, it just would not run. We couldn't figure out what it is. There were certain packages that the original developer were using that were out of date and the packages that my partner was using when he downloaded them, they were, you know, a newer version. So we didn't know if it was the versions that didn't match. After the third meeting, we, or after the second meeting, we scratched that plan and we ended up using the third meeting to get the code running on my computer. My Mac was just a little bit newer and for whatever reason, that worked and we got the code finally running after three sessions and probably two months. We got the code running on my computer and we thought we were ready to go. But throughout that whole process, those two months from when we, when we got the app until uh, mid-September, that really wore me down. That was two months and we'd maybe have a meeting, you know, every couple of weeks where we would get it and then we would try and do it ourselves and then we'd have another meeting and then we'd get a little bit further than try and do it ourselves. And that really, really wore me down because I kept just imagining in my head, if I had control over this, if I was the one who could design this and code this, then it would be done so much faster because I wouldn't be relying on somebody else whose time zones away and emails back and forth and I'd have to save up some money and then pay him for a session. 
So I just got really, I got really worn down with that whole process. And I really started to think this isn't sustainable. I can't keep doing this. I can't keep finding a bug and then paying for a session to fix a bug. And uh, because it wasn't sustainable, that's when I started to think, you know, if there's an alternative way to do this, I'm game. Fortunately, at the same time, this would be maybe mid-August, I started to look into um, no-code and low-code platforms. I had already looked into Flutterflow. That was a little too complex for me, but I did find YouTube videos on Bubble.io. And Bubble.io is a no-code web app designer where you can basically make web apps and design logic and actions and click a button, go to this page kind of stuff. And in mid-August, I was there was a video that was suggested to me where someone was building a Tinder clone with Bubble. It was very much like the video that I saw a year prior where people were building um, Tinder clones with React Native. But I was familiar with Bubble and the video was more up to date. I ended up watching that Tinder clone video and it seemed pretty simple. And I was like, I could do this. I, this is something that I could do. It's not coding, it's, it's no code. Bubble is no code. And so it started to build my confidence and there was this thing in my head where I thought, you know, it's better to do it ourselves than to pay somebody because paying somebody just wasn't a year earlier. I thought my business partner, and I can do this in a couple months and we could just follow this, you know, react native tutorial and get it done. So why would I pay somebody? Then as time went on, I switched until March or April of 2023. And then I was like, paying somebody is totally worth it. I don't want to have to wait. It'd be so much nicer to pay somebody. So then I paid somebody to do it. And then after having to pay more and more and more and more money, we are back to my initial thought, which is I just want to do this myself. And I was going to sacrifice some of the functionality because it would be a web app. It wasn't going to be a mobile app. But because I was so sick of paying somebody, I thought I'd I will do anything to have control over this myself and to do it myself than have to pay somebody to keep doing this for me. So around mid-September, I spent two weeks and it was probably four hours after work where I just, I would come home from work, I would sit down and for four hours, I would just work and I would design and I would put together this platform or this, <clears throat> I would put together pairs as a website. And so after two weeks, I had a website that looked like a mobile app that you could swipe back and forth. We tested it. It was probably another um, two, three weeks of testing, maybe a month of testing to work out some of the bugs. Um, but so let's say, I'd say by mid-October or the end of October, had a functioning website where you could actually sign up. You could sign up with a partner and you could swipe on other couples. So that's end of October. I would say for the next two months, the beginning of November until the end of December, what was happening in those times? That wasn't even too long ago. I don't know, I don't remember. <clears throat> I know a couple of things happened. So we, we sent out, um, we, we actually posted my wife and I on Instagram and just had people that we knew try and sign up. And we probably had 10 couples sign up, found more bugs that I had to go fix. And somewhere in that process in November, I think I found out that people were using Bubble to wrap a web app and turn it into a mobile app where you could publish it on the app store for Google or Apple. And people could access, I don't know what wrapping means, but people could access your website as an app. And so, in November or December, I was thinking in my brain, I should wrap this and get it on the store and then start getting users and start going from there. The only test, the only hesitation that I had was the, the company that I was going to pay to wrap the app and to get it on the app store. Uh, their name is zero code Z and I'll, <laughs> I'll throw up a screenshot of their website. Now they, I think they were going to charge like $800 to get the app wrapped and then to publish it for us. And my wife and I were planning a trip with her family around Christmas. And I didn't want to spend that money. So I kind of drug my feet all throughout December because I didn't want to spend the money. I had the pain of the $5,000 that had just basically gone down the drain. And, uh, 
you know, we were saving up for something else at the time. So didn't spend that money, but I had that in the back of my head is the next step. We're going to wrap this, get it on the app store and then start getting users. The big wrench in that plan was Bubble's mobile application developer. So Bubble is typically used to help people make web apps, but they announced in their developer conference in the end of 2023 that in mid 2024, they're going to release a platform where you can use the same, um, the same look and feel it's, it's, it's still bubble, but instead of building web apps, you're building them for mobile. And then that got me really excited too. I probably played for the, for half of December with that idea in my head of what should, what should I do? What should we be doing? And that battle, not knowing whether I should wrap it and get it on the app store or whether I should wait for bubbles for bubble to release their mobile developer. Um, that's what got me where I'm at now. So, um, a couple more things that I want to recap from this phase two, just from my notes, as I went through my notes again, um, I realized this is when I started posting YouTube videos. So I have a YouTube video of when I had first went into a venture capital firm, I got into their office. I didn't get past the front desk lady, but I really tried during this phase to contact investors, venture capital firms, whatever it might be. I think I went into just one office, but then I sent my pitch deck out to multiple other companies via email. And uh, just thinking in my head, I have to, you know, I have to get investors. I have an app that's in progress, in the works now. And that was probably earlier in the summer before I realized how buggy the app was. I was really like aggressive about trying to get the investor thing going. Um, built a pitch deck and that is reviewed. I think I have that uploaded on YouTube as well. With all that said, I think the biggest thing that I learned throughout the second phase was, um, you know, I've kind of showed you like the, you know, which I preferred doing it myself is what I wanted to do. And then we paid somebody and then I went back to doing it myself. I just generally think that that is the route for, for entrepreneurs generally, but really if you're starting your first business, make sure that it's something that you have control of. Make sure something that you can do. I think Alex Ramosi talks about that. That's why he likes service-based businesses so much. Anybody can start a service-based business because all it takes is you and you can go do services for other people. Um, I think the second thing that I learned or that I finally accepted was that I just wasn't going to get any venture capital or funding without an app or without um, traction, without users. I said I had gone into a venture capital firm. I sent a lot of emails. One more thing that happened in this phase was I tried to apply to a, and it's like an accelerator or an incubator for startups. I don't know which it was called. Um, it's called RevRoad. It's based in Provo, Utah. And they basically take some equity from your company and then you become part of their portfolio for two years. And for two years, you have access to like, some developers, you have access to some marketing, you have access to people who could help you fundraise and all this kind of stuff. And I thought I, I prepared like a separate pitch deck. I sent in an application and I really thought that we were going to get into this. I felt, I felt so good about it. Um, but we got rejected we, from that program. And, uh, in that same period, RevRoad also had a competition for startups in this, you know, Utah Valley area. And the, it was a competition for fundraising. I think the, the prize money for first place was like $15,000. And I remember thinking, well, I didn't get into their portfolio company, but I'm gonna pitch at this event and I'm gonna compete and we'll try and win some money so that we can do, you know, whatever with that $15,000, probably develop a better app. But uh, we didn't even get into the pitch competition. Like my pitch deck wasn't even good enough to get us into that, but I remember seeing the results of that competition a couple of weeks later and the companies that won first, second, third place, the companies that were featured, the one that won audience favorite in that competition. I remember looking at those businesses and thinking like those businesses won, like my company and my idea is a hundred times better than these other companies. Um, but I think they got in and I think they won because they already had some traction. They were companies that were already making sales. They already were successful and it was just, they needed a bit more funding to scale. Whereas I wasn't even, I mean, I had an app on the app store, but 
I didn't have anything that showed that we were making any progress. And I think that matters a lot when you're looking for funding. Unless you had really great connections and you knew investors or you knew VC firms and you had some in, I think coming from the outside and trying to get funding at, at the pre-seed stage, I think it's just hard because they want to see some kind of traction or proof of concept or whatever. And we just didn't meet that criteria. So in phase two, I also gave up a little bit on getting investors and I really set my sights on let's get to like a thousand users. Let's get to 10,000 users. Let's Let's show that this is a good idea. Let's get the users, let's get the traction, and then we'll get the investors. Uh, but yeah, that concludes phase two because by the end of December, I had this turning point, and now it's the beginning of January of 2024, and we're starting totally fresh. So uh, I think my next video will talk a bit more about what the plan is now and what made that switch for me in the last month. But uh, yeah, that does it for this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.